Yeah. Okay. But we're starting. I have lived here for about 14 years. Me and Lorne moved in. Um, yeah, we, uh, we, we met at work and uh, I was, you know, trying to find somewhere to live that we could afford. We was priced out of the area I was brought up in and I certainly weren't going to move up to Cumbria. Um, I was brought up on, you know, a standard council estate. It was quite notorious. It was like called the concrete jungle. It was a really great, great place to grow up because it was just, there was loads of kids, everyone played out, everyone knew each other, everyone looked out for each other. Even though I wasn't from a Christian family, um, the hub of the community was actually this little independent local church. I didn't really engage in school at all. Um, it, it wasn't somewhere where I thrived, um, but as soon as I started work, I absolutely loved it. You know, you sort of think, oh, I should start to think maybe about settling down and things like that. But there was always this sense of being like discontent and knowing that there was more to life. I, I just went to a local baby clinic with my um, daughter and I started talking to this lady and um, we exchanged numbers and we become friends and that lady was um, Hannah Syrid and uh, she told me she was a born-again Christian and I was like oh god okay she invited me to an event at New Community Church which was like a Christmas cake baking and um, you know, I've just hadn't done anything like that before. It was so alien, but it just felt so peaceful and friendly and nice. And uh, the first person I ever remember speaking to from New Community was Anne Power, and she was warm and welcoming. And, you know, I was just so aware of just something different about these people. Um, and then Hannah invited me to a service at New Community and I went and I was like, what is this all about? What it was, I thought, I've been in a church before, but these people were like worshipping. They love, they're in love. Hannah then invited me to um, an Alpha launch night and I'd never heard of an Alpha and I was a bit nervous, but I got my sister to come along and I heard an amazing testimony, which I just hadn't heard, even though I was, a, I just hadn't absorbed it, I hadn't heard it, I don't know, but it, everything was really impacting me. And then at the end, they invited people to sign up to an alpha. And um, I was like, oh, you know, and then he started saying, oh, you know, about being saved, which I hadn't heard of. And, your life can be changed in like quite meaty statements. And I was like, oh, actually, do you know what? This is all a bit too much. And this is so terrible, but it's true. And then they said, but we are having it at the Walnuts restaurant in Sidcup. And then that was it, because I thought, I'm going to get a free dinner. It's going to be a night out, you know? So I went and, um, and, and then from the minute I went, it was just like gold. I was just like, I just could not believe it. It was just like the best thing in the world. I just, you know, hearing about like being saved, um, the Holy Spirit, that God is a personal God. You can talk to him, he is alive. And seeing no normal people living this life that I just didn't even know existed, I was just like, I just loved it. Also, it's, a bit, it's what I see as well with, with her in, over the weeks, like a change in her, like the change towards me, the love. It's just everything, you know, obviously approach towards us all, approach with speaking to people and uh, just a body language. And you could just sense the love in it. And it's, I just said to her, I need to know about this. And I, I need to do it. The thing is, I had so many questions, like 
as soon as one question was answered, I had another question and I had another question. I thought, this is never ending because where am I hoping to, you know, get to? And my table leader was um, Liz Holden. And I remember I asked Liz, Liz this specific question and then she said, I don't know. And then I thought to myself, well, she don't know then that's okay if I don't know everything. So that was a green light for me, because I just thought, I believe in God, I'm receiving all, you know, the, the gift that, you know, I want to receive the gift of salvation and everything like that. And then that was it, I just said yes, and I just thought I'm gonna just learn as I go along. And yeah, I just went for it really. I could feel my faith getting stronger each week, but it's, but it's I still had that um, initial, like walking up the steps to church and looking back to see who was, who was looking at me coming in. Me and Helen was getting on, 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 the, on the sort of the same page and understanding what conversations they're about in church and the preachers and even singing the songs and not just tapping my foot and no, 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 just, 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 no, just, 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 well, just taking part in it, just being, being, well, being part of it. Well, Jesus has just given me, I'm born again, so I'm a new person and he has just given me, he is my everything and I just love him so much and he literally, he just gives me hope for this life and hope for eternity. He's given me purpose, he's given me aspirations and dreams and even when times are hard, I know he's with me and I was going to church and I was just, receiving this amazing teaching and I just wanted to respond to everything that I heard and i would just been given this treasure and I just wanted everyone else to have it because it was so good you know you have been created and like by God and he loves you and he wants to be your father and he gives you hope and you can be born again and he gifts you and you can have eternity with him and I just wanted everyone to know you know I just started praying for my neighbours I just started praying for my neighbours because you know I had received this gift of salvation and when people haven't got it it's just heartbreaking and I just could, you know, their, their need and their brokenness and how lost they are and I just, yeah, I just, God just showed me a bit of his heart and it's so deep in love for people and the lost and he just wants them with him so much. We just don't, I mean, you can't put it into words so much, yeah. We just started off, we'd done, a, we'd done an event down St Andrews, which is a church at the end of my road, a light party. Um, I didn't really know anything about the church, I didn't know anybody. Uh, and one of the ladies there mentioned, who was part of that church, she mentioned that there was a real sense and a real pain that they felt that there was a, a wall been built up between the church and the community. So I specifically started praying into that. And then I just literally, it was on my mind 24 seven. One night I just couldn't sleep because it was trouble, you know, I don't know, it was just really burning on my heart. And uh, I got up in the middle of the night and uh, I just said to God, like, I don't shout at God, but you know, I was a bit like attitude as in, what do you want me to do? You know, and then God spoke to me and said that he wanted me to go round to the vicar and his wife. And then straight away, I just said, okay, but what do I say? And then God told me to take them a gift and then I was like, okay, I'll get up in the morning, I'll go Morrison's, I'll get some flowers and some chocolates. And then I went in bed and slept like a baby. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, so like the next day, it was first thing on my mind, got up, got ready, went to Morrison's, and then, you know, went to make my way to uh, 
the vicarage where the, uh, the vicar and his wife live, but I was really nervous because, uh, you know, obviously I knew of them, but they didn't know me. And I think I said to you, I felt like I was knocking on the Pope's door, you know, like I was so like, oh. But um, I just knocked on their door and you, I, they was a bit perplexed, like who, you know, but then they just said, come in. And um, they invited me in and we had a cup of tea and then they were just so open and so vulnerable and they basically said that they had been praying that God will send them some help. And he sent us. I really felt like uh, God was wanting to do really amazing things in communities on estates in um, areas and a real sense that uh, particularly in Covid uh, God had uh, scattered but gathered understanding it hasn't got to be this amazing thing that simple things can be so impactful and can mean so much to people um, and enjoying it as we're doing it as well. Make, you know, it's not a burden, it, it's fun, it's a pleasure, it's exciting, it's creative. God began to start opening some doors uh, for the possibility that we could use St Andrew's Church for mission. So I've lived in Albany Park for just over eight and a half years now. And then one of the things I've really enjoyed doing is being involved in the events that we put on for the community. So that's for the people in and around Albany Park. Although I'm not much of an ideas person, I've really enjoyed being part of a team and working things out together and doing the things that I'm good at. And we're just really joining together, bouncing ideas off each other. I never considered myself to be uh, very good on the mission front. Um, but since joining the community, um, it's been really encouraging to realise you can get involved in things and that kind of, it gives you kind of a thirst and a hunger to do it. And even if you're only helping out, it, it, you've, by being part of a team, you really feel that you're actually starting to do things and I think you feel more encouraged. Okay, so I moved here um, with my husband and we've been here 18 years, so a year um, before my son was born. I can just remember Helen being in my kitchen, so I think we did meet on the green outside the front of my house and I remember her children and just remember her coming in, to, yeah, being in, in my house. <laughs> I think I kept everything very separate um, for quite a long time. So I went to church on Sunday, I went to a midweek meeting and beyond that, there wasn't an awful lot happening. I went to work for two days and the doing life together and being having a purpose together has taken time to sort out what that really looks like. Um, and that's come with lots of bumps in the road, that's come with challenges. We are not the same here, we are really different. Um, there's not one of us that has the same background on Albany Park. Um, we're extremely different and I think it's one of our strengths because it's one of the things that when people look in on us they question why we spend so much time together. Again Helen's challenged my thinking in terms of like we're not just actually putting on events, we're moving into something where we're asking the community to be involved in them because this is about them, this is about reaching them so it's not just about providing an experience or providing an event and the coming jubilee actually the idea for it came out of a neighbour has started talking first about street parties so it's not come from us this time it's come from within the community and how do we move into enabling them to partner with us knowing that we're bringing the gospel to them, that the barriers that have been about Christian and church and God and Jesus and who he is and what he's like and what that actually looks like in someone's life, I think needs to be torn down completely so that people come in and see us for who we really are. And 
I can see that happening. As I said before, there's so many children in this area that need Jesus, and we've got four kids and <laughs> Scarlet Violet Hart and Bo there, but no, but they've got loads of friends that the stories that we hear, we've you known from them, and, and what we've seen and what we've had in our house as well. Like we keep our house open, our door open, like an open house sort of thing for the kids in the community, and it's just it's, it's just, just it's just knowing it's just giving them something to to feel safe. Like God giving me a picture of that church in the street, like being packed, the the the, uh, the car park being packed of people, and like and like not being able to get in the church. And I really believe there's going to be a great revival, and we're praying on that, we're hoping for, for that. And but knowing that Jesus is in it, and in this community, and in and Him telling us what to do and how to do it, and have a bit of patience with it as well, even though it's hard because because I want it straight away. I just want it. I want it. You know, and it's just. And I, I want to see children bend their knee and their parents bend their knee and their friends and friends and friends and friends and families and stuff and, and just, just let your light shine before others and just doing that, just sharing your, just sharing it, it's, it's uh, yeah, that's what, it's, that's, that's what it's about. We've lived in Albany Park for just over a year and we were very intentional about moving here because of our community. We'd been praying and like trying to think about where we felt God was calling us. And me and Helen had spent a lot of time praying. She'd been speaking to me about her vision. I remember in Swanley Park, Mariah's birthday a few years back now, we'd been talking about it and she was so excited about it. And I just felt she was someone that really took me under her wing as well. And I really wanted to kind of, I saw her vision and I connected with it. And I just felt I wanted to be part of it. The thing about living here is that within walking distance, I can walk to somebody, have a coffee in someone's house, you know, if I'm having a bad day or if I've got no tea bags, you know, if I'm, if I'm just frustrated and fed up and I need to have a moan and someone to pray with, if I feel like overwhelmed, even by people I'm trying to minister to, like, you know, that don't know Christ, I know that I've knocked on Helen and Lorne's door on my travels and stopped them, they weren't expecting me, you know, and we just prayed together, we prayed for this other person. I just know that my family are here and when we came here, I'd, I'd lost my sister and I just feel like I have sisters here. You know, I feel like I have sisters here and it's a beautiful thing, you know. I think it's all about God's love, really, and I think that speaks a, a better word. It really penetrates to people. Through the pandemic, there was food parcels, the finding out what people need and trying to provide for it. And since we've moved here, that we've had an event at Christmas, um, at Easter, we're, we're putting things through people's doors, we're connecting with people, we're putting events on, and now we've got the, the bridge, which is an amazing youth provision, where we're gonna be speaking into the children's lives, showing them love. There's a lot of um, things that children go through, that families go through, and often there's a, a lack of resource. Especially at this current time, the church plays such a role, you know, in filling the gap where there is no funding and no support. And I think we're trying to reach into people's lives in a way that's helpful. It's not really about dictating and coming and banging on drums about Christ. Just by being loved, people are curious. Why do you care? Why do you want to do this for me? And then when you answer those questions and you tell them because what Christ has done in my life, that is captivating and people are interested, you know? And so that's what really excites me. Do you consider yourself a missionary? Um, well, when I, there was a bit of a mystery behind that word, a missionary to me, uh, because I, thought that it was you know people that went abroad and and stuff like that but I'm raveling it a little bit and you know living with the fact that God has called us to go and make disciples um, and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that that was a, a personal commissioning you know that was something he spoke over me because I'm his child and so once I grasped over hold of that I knew that that was like my purpose in life was loving God and loving others for his glory and that meant being a missionary so it's been a bit of a journey because sometimes you can you know say exclude yourself from things but actually it's just being impactful where you are you know, I can make a difference in my community by, you know, walking outside my front door 
and you know be in the hands and feet of Jesus so yeah I would say I am a missionary and I love it it's fantastic it's really exciting and um, you know when you sort of talking to someone like a mum around the school or something and they you say to them well what you been doing today and they you know whatever and then they say well, what what you done this morning and I'm just like I've got to be honest I pray for someone to be baptized in the Holy Spirit you know <laughs> and they were a bit like oh okay but that's the life as a disciple isn't it in in the ordinary you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mum, I'm a, a wife, I'm a daughter, but I've got a commission over my life and I take that very, very, very seriously. And, um, and it's not because I'm special in any way, it's because that's what Jesus says, so I've got to accept it because, you know, it's not right if, if I don't because that's what he's spoken over me and he's my father. There are so many, so many lost people. Yeah, it's a, it's a real passion to you know to be able to to do something for them and provide something practical for them, and also to to tell them about God. Yes, I've been praying for this area. It's my neighbourhood, and it's close to my heart. Honestly, I think we would like to see revival here. I think we're not, you know, who doesn't want that? Because we've got so much hope in Jesus. In, in the I mean, being on mission with Jesus, it's like he's right beside us, he's there, he's, he's in us, he's around us. He's, 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 we want to see that in this community. We want to see bridges built, we want to see walls broken down, doors open. We want to see, we want to see a revival in this area. You know, and seeing the lights go on in people's eyes, you know, when they know that they are loved, that they are forgiven, um, that they are children of God, because people are really lost and they're searching for something, and it's Christ. He's the answer. Thank you.